All right, so you send over this uh, project 2025 thing and wow, 19 bullet points, one single page, feels kind of huge, like a how-to guide for a whole different America. What'd you make of it all? Yeah, no, it's definitely, I mean, it's a bold statement, I guess, laying it all out like this. It's like, all right, here's a potential future, right? And seeing how these points all play together, that's the key. Totally, because like one by one, some of this stuff, it's healthcare, climate, the usual headlines, right? But then you put it all together. Okay, let's just jump in. First up, put Medicare on the path to privatization. Like, haven't we been kind of dancing around this one for a while? Yeah, for sure. This has been in the background for years. And this feels like, okay, here's the concrete step. The argument you always hear is privatization, it equals lower costs, right? Right. More competition, theoretically. But then the flip side, and it's a big flip side, what happens to the people who depend on Medicare now? could be making healthcare less accessible for the folks who need it most, ironically. Yeah, and you're right, that whole impact on everyday people, it's like a thread through this whole document. Like, point two, repeal President Biden's Medicare drug price negotiation program. So basically, government's out of the cheaper meds business. Basically, it's a signal, right? Less government involvement in healthcare costs, period. Could be great for pharma profits, but for individuals, yeah, you might be paying a lot more for your meds. And then, bam, point three, threaten Medicaid coverage for hundreds of thousands of Americans. Yes, a lot of people losing health care, potentially. No, it is. And when you connect that back right to the first two points, the picture starts to get really clear. Health care, much more market driven and, yeah, way less accessible, especially for folks who are already struggling. We're talking about a huge chunk of the population here. It's wild, right? And it's not just health care. Point four takes aim at education. Reverse the Biden administration's student debt relief efforts so much for those loans disappearing. Yeah, so this one is basically saying, you're on your own when it comes to student debt. And listen, some people make a good argument for that individual responsibility and all that, but for a lot of people, it means going back to a system that wasn't really working. And then out of nowhere, we're global. <laughs> Withdraw from the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Paris Climate Agreement. Yeah, Haven't we seen this movie? Spoiler, it doesn't end well. Big one, pulling out of these agreements, it's basically saying America first, even if it means maybe screwing over the planet. A little dramatic, but it makes you wonder what America's role in the world even is anymore, you know, for real. Okay, then we get a whole bunch of points, all about climate, all about energy, point six, repeal the Inflation Reduction Act, President Biden's landmark climate law, which, and this is key, right, included a ton of money for clean energy, so repealing it. Huge impact on renewables, for sure. And it's basically saying, those climate goals, yeah, we're not in a hurry. And just in case you thought maybe they were being sold, 0.7. Shred greenhouse gas regulations and gut clean energy programs. Like, come on. Yeah, no subtlety there. This is straight up deregulation back to old school energy. Air quality, water quality, all that stuff gets impacted. And not just in the long run. Like right now, communities living with pollution, they're going to feel this. Like they're setting the stage, right? Yeah, for 0.8 replace the White House climate advisor with someone focused on boosting the fossil fuel industry. I mean, not even trying to hide it at this point. Fossil fuels are back, baby. At least that's the message. And then, I don't know how they top this, but they do. Point nine, give Trump the power to reject all climate science research directed by the Biden administration. It's just scary, honestly. It's chilling, yeah. Because if you can just ignore science that doesn't fit your agenda, where does that end? You know, it makes everything about politics, not about facts. And with something like climate change, that's terrifying, 100%. Okay, so we're already talking about a very different America, right? Yeah, but then it gets even wilder when you see how they want to change the government itself. Point 10, get the federal workforce and install loyalists by making tens of thousands of civil servants fireable at Trump's will. Is that even legal debatable honestly a lot of folks are going to say that's straight up unconstitutional because the idea of one person having that much power to just fire anyone who disagrees with them talk about favoritism talk about corruption the whole system falls apart you know okay and if the system's falling apart then this next part is really scary point 11 allow trump to deploy the military against american citizens um excuse me when do we start talking about this 
this is a huge deal. We have something called the Posse Comitatus Act for a reason. It limits the military's involvement in domestic affairs. And for good reason, right? You start ignoring that. You're talking about human rights violations. You're talking about a very different kind of America. And it just gets more intense. Point 12, allow ICE to conduct raids at schools, churches, hospitals, playgrounds, and other sensitive areas. This is like creating a police state. Right especially for immigrant community. It's about fear, right? You're not safe anywhere, even in places that are supposed to be sanctuaries. Families, kids, everyone's terrified. And honestly, it's probably illegal. Okay, and then we get to this whole section on social issues and it's like, well, it's very specific worldview, let's say. That point 13, make the federal government establish marriage between a man and a woman as the ideal natural family structure. Didn't we already settle this? This is about going backwards, right? Defining marriage at the federal level and specifically excluding same-sex couples. Huge legal mess, obviously. Yeah. But more than that, it's just mean-spirited, isn't it? Like, why? Seriously, point 14. Withdraw federal anti-discrimination protections for transgender students. So basically, make schools less safe for kids who are already vulnerable. Exactly. Bullying, harassment, all that's just going to get worse. And for what? It's like they're saying these kids don't deserve to feel safe. It's awful. It is. And it just keeps going. Point 15. Implement Trump's transgender military ban and expel transgender service members. So now people who are willing to serve their country, put their lives on the line, yeah, they're not good enough. It's discrimination, plain and simple. And it's heartbreaking because you're telling people your service, your sacrifice, it doesn't matter because you're different. It's wrong. And that same kind of thinking, it just goes right into the next few points, all about reproductive rights. Point 16, reverse the FDA's approval of abortion medication. Huge if it happened. We're talking about taking away a safe legal medical option for women. And it's not just about abortion, it's about controlling women's bodies, making decisions for them. Exactly, and of course they think even further, point 17, invoke a 150 year old defunct law called the Comstock Act to ban the shipment of abortion pills, enacting a de facto national abortion ban. Are you kidding me with this? A 150 year old law, they're digging deep for this one. The Comstock Act, it was all about banning obscene stuff which back then included things like information about contraception. It's been considered ridiculous for decades, but they're trying to bring it back to control women's health. It's scary how far they'll go. It's insane. And then the control thing, it gets even creepier. Point 18, compel states to report the reason for every abortion performed within their borders. That feels I don't know, like big brothers watching. It's about shame, right? Making women afraid to even talk to their doctors. And what's the point? It's not about healthcare, it's about control. It's awful. Ah, and then finally, we get to the last point. Point 19, allow states to ban employers from providing health benefits that cover abortion care. So basically women are on their own no matter what. It's the government saying, we don't care about women's health, plain and simple. And it's terrifying to think about what that means for real people's lives. So we covered a lot, it's a lot to take in. What's the takeaway for you? What do you want people to be thinking about after this? Look, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, this document, it's a vision of the future. It might not be the future you want, but it's a future someone's trying to build. And understanding these ideas, that's the first step to fighting back, to making your voice heard. 100% knowledge is power, but it's also a responsibility. Right? We gotta stay informed, gotta stay engaged. Until next time, everybody, stay curious and stay loud.